behind the scenes. It sounded cool whenever I thought of it. Okay, but here's the deal. I thought of this fun series called Behind the Scenes. And at first when I thought of the title, I was like, well, aren't all of my videos behind the scenes? Because I'm kind of just like filming my life. But then I was like, no, 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 definitely not. This is gonna be a really fun series where I'm gonna take you guys behind the scenes of certain things that I do. This episode is all about Instagram. How I take Instagram pictures, what filters I use. I'm gonna let you in on all of the secrets. Tickle fingers! <laughs> Okay, so let's get into it. Tip number one, I would say when you are approaching Instagram, let's say you have an account or you're making an account, figure out what your purpose is. If you're wanting to eventually do um, brand sponsorships, partnerships, things like that, then there's a certain route that you're gonna go um, then would be different than just posting stuff just to post it. I got Instagram way back in the day before Instagram was what it is now. I started on Instagram like six years ago, and I think my first picture was of like a Dr. Pepper. I don't know, it wasn't creative, it wasn't what it is now, it wasn't people doing photo shoots, it was just fun pictures that you post. Guys, <laughs> there's, a, there's a little friend right there. Yes, this is called filming when it's a snow day. Anyway, okay, so I started Instagram back in the day when it was just whatever it is. But speed up to now, Instagram is a whole new thing, and it's been awesome, there's a ton of opportunities, but I think the approach has definitely changed. Secondly, I would say you're gonna have to make your profile public. I can't tell you how many people will reach out to me and say, hey, uh, I need tips on Instagram, this and that, and then I go to their profile and it's private. It's like, no one can find you, you can't really do much if your profile's private. Now, does that mean you need to bare your soul to the internet on Instagram? No, feel free to have a private account where you just post private things that you don't really want everyone to see, and then have a public one as well. So for me, I like to keep my Instagram as authentic as possible. That's my personal preference. Most of my pictures are not going to be like photo shoot set kind of pictures. Now, I love following accounts that do that, where they do um, more posed kind of photography, but I like to keep mine a mix of some fun photography post kind of things, photo shoots, and then other like real life things. That's just my personal preference. And I also feel like my followers, you guys, enjoy that. You like seeing maybe some higher quality pictures, but then also just some everyday life, me shooting with my camera on my phone. So that's my style, that's my aesthetic. I would say figure out what you wanna do. One way that I've really seen success when working with brand partnerships and things like that is having high quality pictures. Instagram, that's what it is now. It, it is um, high quality pictures are eye catching and they are a necessary part of Instagram. I will say the more I've invested time in doing higher quality photography, um, the more I've been able to do more brand partnerships because at the end of the day, brands want their content to look good. When they go on your Instagram to see if they wanna work with you, um, they're gonna wanna see decent quality pictures. So find a photographer that you work well with. I am so lucky to have friends who live near me, um, who I vibe really well with, and they help me out a lot. A full disclosure, I'm awkward in front of the camera and I've really had to learn how to shoot with people that know how to shoot me, um, and this and that. Okay, currently looking for inspiration. This is Chim, he is a friend. Oh, he's so tall, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, if you work with a photographer, give them an idea of what you want. Something that I'm learning through and working through. She's Thankfully, oh, job. there's the green chairs, by the way. Oh, man, yeah, right? the green chairs. Okay. The window's gonna be an interesting thing to work oh, with. Oh, is it? Okay. I said interesting. Interesting is not synonymous with that. I'm literally too short to walk with you. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Okay, Randy, so in order to get a good Instagram, I have to have a photographer. Not at all. I'm gonna give you a few t tips and tricks on how to shoot your own stuff. Okay, so first of all, if you are wanting to take some pictures and you just wanna use your cell phone, I would snag one of these little selfie sticks from Amazon. Not sponsored, but I found this on Amazon. I will try to find the link for it. It was really inexpensive. Basically, you can just attach your phone to it, and I take a lot of pictures of this. Then, you can head over to your settings in your phone and use the self-timer. Most phones have this. I think all phones have this. It's a hidden gem. I love to use the forward-facing camera because the quality is the best. So I use my self-timer and strike a pose. Next up 
up is editing the picture. I love Lightroom. It's actually free, I think, the phone version, but I use that a lot and I just use the presets they already have. I don't buy any extra, but it helps with lightening pictures or changing the aesthetic. I absolutely love Lightroom. It's my go-to for editing. So I'm using my phone again for this picture. Like I said, my Instagram is a mix of higher quality pictures and then just phone pics as well because I love just snappy moments that we're in. I use the Lightroom app to edit. And then here's another way I like to shoot. I use my DSLR and I have a tripod for that as well. And I use the time, the self timer app on that as well. And we do little photo shoots in our house and it works really great. So that's another way I get high quality pictures um, on my own. Last but not least, my tip would be try to enjoy it. I think that Instagram, um, social media in general, is a creative outlet. So enjoy the process. You are approaching Instagram and wanting to work with brands and things like that. Um, don't focus on the numbers. I know that that seems like what everything is about is like, I need 300,000 followers to do anything. But honestly, companies are looking more at engagement than anything. And when I say engagement, I mean how um, connected are you to your, your followers? Do you reply back? Um, engagement a lot of times is more important than just having like a giant number of followers. Um, and this leads right into something that can be very controversial, but in my opinion, I would say do not buy followers. That is, I know that's like, some people feel differently, but for my personal opinion, I would say don't buy followers and here's why. I have actually worked personally with companies who have sent out um, emails talking about this specifically about how they do not want to work with content creators or influencers who have bought followers because it's not authentic engagement. So buying followers, for those of you who are in the dark, is something you can do. You can buy followers and it can be totally reputable. It'll make you look like you have more followers than you have. I don't know how it all works because I've actually never done it and I really highly just not doing that. I think that it's an easy fix, but in the long run, it really will hurt you because you won't have that authentic engagement. And Instagram is meant to be a community at the end of the day, just like YouTube and all these other platforms. So by buying followers and things like that, it kind of takes away from that community aspect of it. So really shy away from that. Do your best to engage naturally without doing that. And I will say a lot of companies also are finding ways to find out if you have bought followers um, and they're not really a fan of that. So that's all I'm gonna say about buying followers. Enjoy Instagram and also be you. I think it's really easy to get on. I know I've struggled with that where you get on, you look at someone's page, you're like, oh my gosh, their page looks so amazing, maybe I should do that. But I think that when you're just being who you are, um, it is much more profound than trying to be something else. And it's also a lot easier to upkeep than being someone else. Okay, so that's all for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you're not following me on Instagram, feel free to do that. And let me know if you found this video to be helpful. Also, if you use any of the tips and tricks that I showed you, tag me on some of your pictures and tag me in some of your stories so I can see. Um, I love sharing with you guys. So thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you on the next video. Bye.